New Zealand is an amazing land of contrast, beauty and adventure. If you were ever thinking of visiting New Zealand, you really should. To help you on your visit, we've interviewed tourists from around the world and compiled these top 7 things New Zealand tourists wish they'd known before visiting. Some things are exactly like you'd expect. Driving in New Zealand is like anywhere. You've got to have your current driver's licence and you've got to wear your seatbelt when you're driving. Obviously, you're not allowed to drive while drunk and the driver can't use their phone while driving. New Zealand drives on the left side of the road. If you're from one of these countries, this means everything is going to be reversed for you. To help you out, some intersections have signs pointing to which side of the road you should be on. If you get confused and spot one of these, follow it. A useful guide is that the driver should be closest to the centre line. If there is a passenger seat between you and the centre of a two-way street, pull over and reorient yourself. Most road signs are self-explanatory. This is a speed limit, road construction, no stopping, no parking, and this sign means you can drive up to the national speed limit of 90 or 100 kilometres per hour, depending on your vehicle. Hang on, that looks like a very narrow bridge ahead. This is a one-lane bridge, and it has a specific set of rules in order to be crossed safely. If the large arrow points ahead, then you have the right of way, and as long as nobody is already on the bridge, then you may cross. Obviously, if someone is already crossing the bridge, then you've got to wait for them as they have nowhere else to go. If the small arrow points ahead, then you do not have the right of way, and it is your responsibility to wait until all oncoming cars have crossed. A couple of bridges in New Zealand also share the road with trains. As you can imagine, the train always has the right of way. Half of the 1,500 railway crossings in New Zealand have alarm bells just like these. However, for the other half, you need to slow down and check it's clear before proceeding. There are around 24 collisions per year between trains and motor vehicles on public road crossings in New Zealand. This sign indicates an upcoming roundabout, which is a round intersection that works a bit like a flowing four-way stop. Since all traffic moves in a circle, you need to check to your right to determine when it is safe to proceed. When turning left, indicate left and turn as you would at a normal intersection. If you're turning right, indicate right as you enter the roundabout clockwise, then indicate left as you prepare to exit. If you're going straight, only indicate when you're about to exit. In the case of a two-lane roundabout, both lanes can often go straight, but you'll need to be in the right lane if you're turning right, and the left lane if you're turning left. Great, now that we know how to safely navigate the country, where should we go? Tourists often struggle to see all the sites they wish during their trip, simply because the sites are spread out across all of the country. Locations that appear close on the map can actually be quite far away due to extreme terrain and the winding roads. Most of New Zealand is countryside, so be sure to fill up the petrol tank and the grocery bags whenever you get a chance. Grocery stores in New Zealand are like those in most Western countries. They stock staple foods such as coffee, cereal, noodles, eggs, bread, beer and wine. Shopping at a supermarket can also be far less expensive than buying the same items at a dairy or a convenience store. When paying at a petrol station or a grocery store, you may be asked if you have coupon or flybys. If you don't know what they are, you don't have them, so just say no. The answer to the question credit or FPOS is a little bit trickier. FPOS is everywhere in New Zealand, but it's incompatible with most overseas debit and credit card PIN systems. You're welcome to try using your debit card or credit card PIN number, but don't be too surprised if it doesn't work. The most reliable method is to use your credit card and when asked PIN or sign, you choose sign or press enter on the terminal, then sign your receipt. Many small cafes, takeaway shops and small town shops only accept FPOS. Your credit card will not work with them and you will need to carry some cash if you hope to buy anything off the beaten track. When eating out in New Zealand, know that tipping is not mandatory and it is not rude to simply pay the total amount on the bill. If you are driving and someone at the side of the road waves at you like this, that is a New Zealand indicator that there is a road hazard just ahead, so slow down. Farmers are required by law to put up signs that they are moving animals on the road. Ideally, this would be flashing lights, but it can be as little as a bit of cardboard with the word stop painted on it. If you see a stop sign, slow down and keep an eye out for animals. If the road is completely blocked, simply stay on your side of the road and slowly drive past or through the herd. Above all, enjoy the moment as you are now officially experiencing life in New Zealand. If a moving tractor is blocking the road, slow down and wait to safely pass. Farmers will usually drive to the side of the road when it's safe, or at least give you enough of a view to make a good passing decision. Don't panic, just wait until you're sure it's safe to pass and carry on. For the same reasons, if you're driving a camper van and are holding up traffic behind you, look for safe areas to pull over and allow people to pass. 
Since driving can be long and challenging, be sure to take plenty of rest stops and never drive tired. Also stop every now and again to enjoy the awesome scenery. Right, you've been sightseeing all day and you need a place to sleep. In tourist towns, there'll always be an assortment of fully serviced campgrounds, motels, cabins and backpackers. But advanced booking is often needed during the summer tourist season. When you enter a town, keep a lookout for signs leading to eyesights, which offer tourist information and a free local map of the area. The Department of Conservation operate over 200 awesome campsites around New Zealand that are great value for money and often in beautiful locations. Most of these sites are between $6 and $10 per person per night. A versatile and popular tourist option is hiring a camper van. This gives you the freedom to travel where you wish and sleep as late as you like. Also, a self-contained camper van will give you a toilet whenever you need one. Be aware though that by having the ability to pull up and camp wherever you like does not give you the right to. Many councils have laws against roadside camping. If you park in the wrong area or on private land, you may find yourself waking up to an angry knock on the window and the risk of a fine. To avoid this, you should know what the Freedom Camping rules are for the region you're staying in and where the designated camping locations are. To help make your trip easier, you can download the free Maui NZ Road Trip app, which shows designated Freedom campsites, real-time road warnings, dump stations, petrol stations, free Wi-Fi, public toilets, laundromats and pretty much everything you need when you're on the road. Obviously, the best way to see more of New Zealand is to stay longer. The number one wish of tourists is that they could have spent more time taking the country in. So, welcome to New Zealand. Be sure to get a great night's sleep because you aren't going to want to miss a moment of your time here.